Hi everyone, welcome to The Knit Shift episode 81. My name is Laura and today is Sunday, January 29th, 2017. Thank you so much for checking out my podcast, whether you are a new or returning viewer. This is my canine co-host, Gracie. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have, will have known the past two weeks have been quite difficult for me. Gracie got really, really sick. She was in the hospital for four days. She came home a week ago today and she's on the mend. Thank goodness. So I'm glad she joined me right at the beginning of the episode so I could show you guys that she's doing quite a bit better. We'll talk about that more later. So yes, I am Laura. I'm the host of The Knit Shift. Um, this is my podcast. I've been doing a podcast for almost two years. I took last week off because life was crazy and thank you for understanding <laughs> why with everything going on. I live in Virginia near, near the beach and I am a journalist. I work at a news organization and I live with my boyfriend Josh and Gracie and a lot of yarn. So thank you for stopping by if this is a an early or a new visit and thank you if, if we've been chatting for a while and you, you've been watching my podcast for a while. Why? Okay, I'm keeping it real. Gracie is like licking me right now on my chest. What is the deal? There's no food here. I didn't even eat anything in this t-shirt. So yeah. We keep it real around here. Show notes can be found at thenitshift.com. This episode is available on iTunes and YouTube. And if you've been watching recently and there was some stuff in flux about iTunes, don't worry. It's on iTunes. It will be for at least the next year. Uh, show notes can be found at thenitshift.com. And I'm on Ravelry as Yarnstormer. And I am on Instagram as Laura Mahalski. And we do have a group for the podcast on Ravelry. And that's where you can stay up to date on stuff like knit alongs and chatter threads. So uh, if you go to the groups tab on Ravelry and search for the knit shift, you will find us. And she's Gracie's down in my lap. So we have a lot to talk about today. I'll save all of the, the Gracie chat for the end in case hearing about my travails of the past two weeks isn't really your, your jam, but so many people have reached out. I've, it's not just been Gracie, I've been dealing with a lot of back pain and leg pain too. Um, so it's been a really rough two weeks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I'll talk about that more later because I do have a good bit of knitting to share with you today. And I'm, I'm really excited to be back podcasting after I took last week off. I really missed it. I missed talking to you guys. So I hope you enjoy the episode. We are going to have a knit along starting in just a few days. Gosh, I will start a thread in Ravelry for this as soon as I can in, in the knit shift group, but it's going to be, let me pull up my notes here. It's going to be the love yourself knit along. I honestly can't remember what I said two weeks ago in my, my most recent episode, whether it starts February 1 or February 14. I'll go back and watch it and I'll put some text on the screen to clarify myself. Um, basically it goes until at least the end of March. And it's a chance to knit yourself something. You know, a lot of people make gifts around the holidays and then we're ready to cast on something for ourselves. So it's the Love Yourself Cow. Uh, you have to use at least 50 grams of yarn uh, for the project. So at least, you know, anklet socks minimum. Uh, new projects only, no whips, but I will have the details about that in Ravelry. And I already have some great prizes tucked away. I have some yarn donations. I have I, I bought some um, really nice lotions and some some just some treats. The the whole theme is to do something nice for yourself. So I tried to buy a few things with that in mind. So stay tuned for that. I have no finished objects to share with you this week, but I wanted to show you I wanted to show you an FO of several years ago. Hopefully you guys don't mind me petting Gracie and having her creeping on the podcast right here. Hi. Gracie just had her F-O-O-D, so she's kind of sleepy and she has a full tummy. Yeah, you're going to fall asleep soon, aren't you? So my boyfriend Josh is was in Chicago for two weeks uh, doing training for his new job. And he, you know, it's winter in Chicago and he wears this hat that I made him out of socks that rock, lightweight. This is his most worn hat, apart from the one that he wears inside his helmet when he goes skiing. He left it in an Uber the day before he was supposed to come home. And so he was so upset. It was just like the icing on the cake of everything that had happened while he was gone. And I was sick and hurt my back and Gracie was sick. And I was so sad. I mean, of course I'll knit him another hat, but he loves this hat. He wears it all the time. So you can see it's, it's, mo it's solid black, but then there are these blips of purple and turquoise 
in there and it's just it's really more subtle than it appears on camera right now but it's been a great hat for him so he called the uber driver and the uber driver was going to try and drop it off before he left but then he couldn't get there so the ho he basically the driver brought it to josh's hotel and then the hotel mailed it to josh so thank goodness his hat is back in action he was so relieved he felt so bad about it and i mean i was only disappointed in so much as you know it's he loves the hat i don't mind i would never mind knitting him another one so Anyway, I just thought I would share that with you. That's a nice little bit of sunshine to come out of the past two weeks. So I have three works in progress to share with you. I have first a pair of socks that I'm keeping in my Erin Lane project bag. I love this bag. I love the chevrons. I love the rainbow. I really want to knit these and finish them in time for my birthday, which is two weeks from yesterday. But I just know I'm not going to get them done. Let's be real. Gracie has now fallen asleep on my lap. So these are socks that I'm knitting for myself out of Miss Babs Hot Shot in the SAF 2016 colorway. It's purples and whites and greens and blacks and rusty oranges. I love this yarn so much. I thought I had the yarn tag here. Um, I think it's Hot Shot. It's an 80-20 merino nylon and it's 400 yards. So it's really springy. The twist on the yarn is great. And I love how it's knitting up. This isn't a color I would normally gravitate toward, but I really love her SAF colorways. I've bought them the past two years and I really, really enjoy them. So I'm obviously I'm knitting these two at a time, toe up, and they are on a size one needle, I believe, which is a 2.25 millimeter. Yes. And they're my trusty Chiaogus, which I adore. They're just, I love them. I love the cable. I love the point on them. They, I knit almost all of my socks on Chiaogus. Just a really nice, really nice, reasonably priced needle, I think. They are sharp, though, so watch out. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I haven't worked on these a ton. Um, I think I was, like, right about here when I showed these to you three weeks ago. I didn't show them on the last episode. So I've knit a couple inches. But I just keep gravitating, gravitating toward my, um, my sock yarn blanket instead. For some reason, that's just all I want to knit on. And with everything going on in my life right now, I just need to keep things simple and knit what I want to knit. So if I don't finish socks by my birthday for that reason, I can be okay with that. My next whip is a baby project for my niece. I haven't shown this in a little while and I thought, you know, I've made enough progress. I can, I'll bring it out again. And I have finished the body and I'm on the edging. Here comes Josh. I hear the door opening from his, he went to get a haircut. Gosh, your haircuts are fast. Or was it and busy? I got coffee too. And you got coffee. What? Oh my gosh, that's so crazy fast. <laughs> So anyway, this is a little newborn cardigan for my niece who will be born in March. Um, I can't believe it's less than two months, hopefully till she gets here. It's so exciting. Um, this will be my first niece, first niece or nephew, period. So very excited about that. And I love how this is working up. I finished the body and instead of going right to the sleeves, I decided I wanted to knit the button band first. I just... For some reason, when that is the last thing to do, it always makes me kind of sad. And I would rather just do the button band because it's fiddly and be done with it and then knit the sleeves and then I'm completely done. So I'm knitting this out of Hedgehog Fibers sock in the Candy Floss colorway. This was a club colorway last year. I don't remember what month, but I joined the twist. I'm sorry, this is Hedgehog Twist, not Hedgehog Sock. I joined the Twist Club um, last year for a few months, and I loved everything I got. And I would totally join again if, you know, I didn't have a room full of yarn in the other room. So I really love how this is knitting up so much. Perfectly variegated, super girly. I love it. And like I said, this is the Scrappy Socky Stripey Cardi. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I've knit three or four of these over the years. It's an easy pattern great pattern, super simple. It's a good first baby knit. 
The body is knit on a size two needle and I'm doing the edging on a size one needle. Gracie, stop. So yeah, I'm a couple rows into the, the edging and the button band. The instructions call for you to pick up each button band separately and the collar separately. I don't really see the point in that. I just, I pick the whole thing up and go around the neck and the body. I'm, I'm, I'm all for simplification right now in my life. So I love this. I'm getting really close to putting the buttonholes in and then I'll be closer to finishing the button band. I have some vintage white buttons picked out for my button stash. Um, I picked them up in Austin, Texas when Josh and I were there in August and I'm really excited to use them on a project for my niece. And last but not least, I have my blanket to share with you guys. She's gonna try and get up on the couch behind me. I just know it. Gracie has been getting lots of sleep since she came home from the hospital. Um, lots and lots of sleep, lots and lots of rest. So, oh my gosh, you guys. I'm gonna flip the camera. I'm wearing shorts, but I'm gonna just flip this down and show you, look at how cute she is sitting here beside me. And again, I promise I'm wearing shorts. That was a lot of thigh. Sorry, not sorry. So I'm keeping my blanket in this awesome bag from Casey's Pockets to Go. Um, it's not going to fit in here very long, but for the time being, it will. And I don't have a, bl a square on the needles right now, so it's kind of a good time to show you where I am. And I squared it off. I have 16 squares completed. And here's where I started in the corner with the pink. So that's where I am. It's it's a good width for one person right now. It's um, eight blocks wide, but I'm probably gonna make it at least 12 blocks wide. So I added this one. This is Periwinkle Sheep in the colorway 11 ways to dry a chili pepper, I think. I added this beauty. This is, gosh, is it Madeline Tosh? This might be Madeline Tosh. I can't remember this beautiful purpley black and then I added this and I cannot remember what it is but it just I think it worked out perfectly I'm kind of obsessed with it I love it so I'm knitting this on a size 2 needle um, 51 stitches is how many stitches I start with for each square and all of the instructions on what I'm doing are available on my Ravelry page so this is really where my brain has been lately I've been all about the blanket um, and I'm enjoying the heck out of it I have to say with that, that brings me to just kind of giving you an update about what, what has been going on over the past two weeks. So I spoke two weeks ago about how I had hurt my back walking to and from work in the snow, and then I fell down my stairs and I seemed to aggravate my back further. And then I recorded, I went to Ohio, went to my sister-in-law's baby shower, was on medicine all weekend, started to feel like I was on the mend, and then I recorded for you guys two weeks ago tomorrow on Monday. That day, I made some homemade soup, and I gave Gracie, I would brought a rotisserie chicken home, and I used the meat on it because that's just, I love to do that, and then I can have a little lunch from the chicken even as I'm picking it clean for my soup. I gave Gracie a couple bites of chicken, pretty small ones, and I also made turkey beef meatballs from scratch. And a tiny little piece fell on the floor of a meatball, raw, and Gracie ate it. And I thought, okay, that's not the end of the world. Overnight Monday, and again, this is still while Josh was in Chicago two weeks ago. Overnight, Gracie was panting so badly that it was shaking the bed and it woke me up in the night. And she wouldn't settle. She wouldn't sit still. She, you know, she was just really restless. And so I took her to the vet Tuesday morning. I, I actually got to the vet before they opened. I was like the second person in the door. And they saw me really quickly. They did blood work. Um, and the vet presumed, rightfully so, as it turns out, that it was pancreatitis, which is a sudden inflammation of the pancreas. Um, she wasn't, Gracie wasn't vomiting. She was just really lethargic and it was kind of scary. So. Um, we got some medicine, some antibiotics, you know, really limited diet, came home. Um, that afternoon, she started to get sick and barf, and I decided to go back to the vet to get some pain medicine. So I got the pain medicine, lost my debit card, 
in the parking lot where my car was that day and someone picked it up and started to use it that night at a 7-Eleven and the liquor store, which was really awful. So I got fraud alerts right away. They only spent like $20. Um, it really, it could have been worse. I got the money back in my account, but it was just the principle of the thing while Gracie was really sick. Um, and, and again, and so that day while I was carrying her food up the stairs, um, the vet had given me some bland canned food. I seemed to re-trigger something in my leg and my hip and my back. And I felt something twinge, like a muscle twinge in my butt while I was carrying her food up the stairs. And all of a sudden my left foot and calf were completely numb and my back hurt again. I could, you know, it was hot, walking was hard. And I was like, what did I just do? So cut to Wednesday, Gracie was still sick, still barfing, refusing food. And so I took her back to the vet and um, they weighed her and she lost two pounds overnight. And the blood work, you know, her, the, I don't, I don't, well, the blood work doesn't matter. The vet said, you know, this is Wednesday near the close of business. She said, you probably should take her to an emergency vet so they can give her fluids and hospitalize her and monitor her overnight. Cause my vet is not a 24 hour vet. So that's what I did. I had a friend, I had a coworker who's a friend drive me to the emergency vet at, during rush hour out in Virginia beach, about 25 minutes away. Um, we got checked in, took a couple hours. So yeah, she was going to be hospitalized starting Wednesday night and she ended up staying there four days. Uh, I visited every day. Um, she, you know, it was really kind of a roller coaster cause she'd have a good day and she would eat food. And then like, I think it was Thursday or Friday, her Thursday, her, or no, it was Friday. Her belly was distended. Her belly was enormous and it was hard to the touch. And so they had to run a tube into her stomach to pump her stomach out through her nose. It was just all this fluid and it, and you know, that the further blood work confirmed that she had pancreatitis. So they emptied her stomach that way and that helped. And so when we saw her, for, when I saw her from Friday on, she had like a, a nasal thing running through her nose. It was in through her nose, down, probably down her throat. And then the end of it was kind of taped to her. It was sutured to her cheek and she had to have the cone of shame on, which was hilarious and sad all in one. So Josh got home late Friday night and all the while this week, my back is killing me. I, I went to the doctor again. Um, I tried one medicine for a week and it didn't have much effect. So I'm on a new medicine now, hopefully to calm the nerve pain, but the doctor is pretty convinced I have a slipped disc in my back. I went for x-rays, the x-rays confirmed I don't have a broken back, which I expected. So it was just a really tough week after, you know, I recorded last Monday and then the next, the next seven days were really hard. And, uh, Josh got home late Friday night and we went over to the emergency vet at 1130 at night. So Josh could see her. And I think it did Gracie a bit of good and it did Josh some good. And starting fr from Friday afternoon on, she kept getting better and better. So we were able to bring her home Sunday morning. And, you know, Friday was inauguration day. Um, it was a really busy time for me at work. It was just so much going on with my leg pain and um, I'm limping, I'm kind of limping to get around. So anyway, long story short, Gracie is home. She's doing better. We, we have a follow-up at my at the regular vet tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna be taking her to that. Um, they did discover, they did an ultrasound and they, they discovered her gallbladder is inflamed. And while they don't think that's the main problem of what went wrong, it's a problem we have to monitor through medicine and diet probably the rest of her life. So I'm going to follow up with my regular vet about that tomorrow. So yeah, it was a very expensive four day stay in the dog hospital, but, and it was very, very, um, touch and go for a while because she was so lethargic and she is 11. I'm not, I'm not a fool. I don't want to, throw money. I'm not going to spend $10,000 on a dog that's 11 years old. Not that I have that kind of money to spend anyway, but it was just, I had to like sign a DNR form, you know, if they had to do an emergency surgery and her heart stopped, it was just, I'll get all emotional if I talk about it too much, but long story short, she's home. She seems to be on the mend. Um, I'll try and put a little video clip. She, she, she cried the entire way home. Uh, I think she was trying to tell us how happy she was to be leaving the vet. 
So we are just so over the moon glad that she's home again. So that's the Gracie story. And then the me story is, boy, this, this leg pain has been really rough. I am, um, you know, I, I took it, I take it for granted that I'm generally a healthy person and I can get around and move around and go to the gym four or five days a week. And I haven't done that in, a, in almost a month because this leg pain has been so bad. It's like pins and needles and my foot is asleep. So, and I'm a very active person in general. My job is very demanding and I'm up and I'm talking to people and I'm go, 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 go. And I'm not doing my best work right now because I'm in a lot of pain. Gracie is snoring beside me. Can you hear that? Maybe it was just a one time. She just kind of put herself, put herself down next to me and is, has her head on my phone. So it's been a really rough couple weeks for me health wise. And it's been very sobering to realize I'm not able to walk around like I normally am. And I'm trying to take it easy and not overtax myself and over and I'm 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 really picking and choosing what I'm able to do like going to the grocery store or ask I'm I'm not good at asking for help, you know. I wasn't good at it when Josh was out of town and I'm not good at it now, but I'm really trying to keep it low key and rest my foot. Um, I start physical therapy in a few days and I'm really excited for that because I really want to, I want to get better. I'm really motivated to get better, but I think the hardest thing is realizing that it's not, there's no, it's not like if I do X, Y will definitely happen. Like it's my pain, it comes and goes on an hourly basis and a daily basis. So just cause I feel good on Thursday doesn't mean I'm going to wake up and feel good Friday. So it's been very difficult and hard to understand that and remind myself of that. So I'm really trying to take things easy and not overtax myself. Uh, I don't even want to knit all the time. Like I just, I can't get, I can't always get comfortable on the couch. So, you know, and I'm trying to do my job and do a good job at my work, but I'm really not a thousand. I'm not batting at a thousand percent right now a hundred percent see I'm not at a hundred percent right now um and I'm on I'm on you know I'm on medicine to hopefully help with the pain I'm a little fuzzy brain because I'm also on a muscle relaxer right now so um yeah it's just it's been tough um but I'm trying to take my weekend which is Sunday Monday I'm trying to take my weekend and rest and not overburden myself at work and try to rely on the, on the generosity of coworkers who are pitching in for me and that kind of thing. So it's been rough. Um, sorry to be Debbie Downer, but that's kind of where I am right now. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on, but I'm going to take the rest of the day. Josh and I have dinner in the crock pot and, um, I'm going to take the rest of the day and work on this, editing this podcast and, get it up for you guys. Cause I, I would like to do that. So I want to say thank you, a huge thank you to everyone who left a comment on Instagram as I was navigating the roller coaster of Gracie's sickness. And thank you to Lorraine who sent me a pattern on Ravelry to brighten my day. It was so kind. I almost cried. So I can't thank you all enough for the support you've shown me the past couple weeks because it's been a rough couple weeks for me you guys I I can't sugarcoat it it was really really rough so uh thank you from the bottom of my heart for thinking of Gracie and worrying about Gracie and me it really does mean so so much and I'm just thank you you're the best so I think that's everything for today I am gonna go and um probably cuddle up with Gracie here and work on editing this podcast. So I will talk to you guys hopefully next week. That's the plan. Take care. Have a wonderful time knitting and doing all the things that make you happy. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.